All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bill Reed, and I am the lawyer who provides the legal service uh, to members of the Continuing Education Student Association at Ryerson, also known as CSER. This afternoon, we're going to be talking about debt issues, both uh, when one owes money and when money is owed to oneself. So uh, we're going to talk about both sides of that and a lot of little details. Um, this is who I am. You provide legal advice and assistance on any legal matter. And uh, there are just a few mentioned there, but uh, all that students need to do is to contact me by email. Uh, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic and shutdown, I was on campus every Tuesday afternoon into the early evening. Right now, the service is being provided remotely by email. And any day of the week, a student is welcome to email me and I'll get right back to you and we can discuss your issue, provide a consultation over email and ongoing dialogue over email. So, uh, and as I say, any legal matter, I'll do all that I can do. And if there's somebody else who can assist better, well, I'll try to help put you in touch with that person. So I wanted to, uh, I'm currently the interim C uh, services coordinator for CSER and my name's Amanda. I wanted to do a landed acknowledgement and I know that it's a bit tricky because all of us are from different areas at the moment being online, but Toronto is in the dish with one spoon territory. The dish with one spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas and Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans and all newcomers have been invited to into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. So feel free in case you don't know where you are, uh, you can always check out native-land.ca to check out which territories you're on and uh, become more acquainted. So sorry, take it away, Bill. No problem, thank you very much, Amanda. Uh, so we're going to discuss, first of all, if someone owes you money. If someone owes you money, you are the creditor and they are the debtor. And uh, <clears throat> that's before you ever bring a, a legal action or anything. Uh, and so if someone is, is owed money, they may file a lawsuit through the civil court system. And I mentioned the civil court system because it is a different system than the criminal court system. Uh, with, uh, when two people are dealing with money owed between them, it's not a criminal matter. The police do not get involved if there's no aspect that goes beyond that, if there's no criminal aspect. And um, the criminal courts don't either. It is the civil court system. So someone who is owed money may file a lawsuit, a lawsuit through the civil court system. If the court agrees, it will issue a judgment ordering the other person to pay. And if the amount is $35,000 or less, the claim may be filed in small claims court. Now, the limit for small claims court has risen over the years, and it's a good thing. Uh, years ago, it was like 6,000, then it rose to 10, they made a big jump to 25 uh, some years ago, and now it's 35. So any claim up to $35,000 may be brought in small claims court. The good thing is that uh, why the government does it, has, has raised that limit, is because small claims really is a more efficient system than the higher levels of court. Uh, as uh, this slide here mentions, the forms are on the Small Claims Court's website in fillable form, like fillable format. Most people are able to represent themselves either by, by reading rules that are online or with a reasonable amount of background assistance. And I provide that background assistance to students who are in Small Claims Court, either if they are suing or being sued. Uh, and um, as I said, it's a fairly straightforward system. There is a filing fee, nor are currently $102. Don't know how they exactly hit that amount, but still just, you know, it's, uh, it's not much compared to what the costs are to go to other levels of court. And it may be waived for low income individuals. So we're uh, still gonna be talking about if you're the person who money is owed to, as I said, there are higher levels of court for greater amounts owed, but the forms are not as easy to use. The filing fees are higher. 
And most people are not able to, rep to represent themselves in the higher levels of court and should therefore be represented formally by a lawyer. So again, that's what makes small claims court so advantageous if uh, the amount you're suing for is $35,000 or less. You can do it yourself with background guidance, low fees, uh, easy to use forms. At any court level, a claim must be filed within two years of when the debt arose. And in some cases, notice of the claim must be served prior to that mainly in accident cases, uh, either where uh, there's an insurance company involved or if there's a municipality involved, for instance, uh, because of potholes in the road or tripping on an uneven sidewalk. In some of those cases, there is a need to provide notice more promptly. In most cases, there's a two year limitation. So just keep in mind that there is a limitation at most two years in any case, and it could be we have to take some kind of action sooner. So the important thing is be prompt in consulting a lawyer if you feel you're owed money. Uh, if, if you are successful at court and obtain a judgment against another party, the court itself, it issues that judgment, but it does not guarantee that payment will be made and it does not make the payment itself. <laughs> Um, people sometimes think when they go to court, if they win, well, it's guaranteed they're going to get the money and the court somehow is going to make sure that happens. The court can only do so much. Like I said, the court does not pay you. Uh, the court merely orders that the other party, the debtor, uh, the defendant to a court action, and now the debtor, if you win, owes you money. And what they do do is to provide certain enforcement procedures. So although they don't, like I say, guarantee or make the payment themselves, the court does provide enforcement procedures, such as hearings at which the debtor must come and acknowledge what income or assets they have and what uh, payment schedule they can commit to and keep. So the court does that. They have the, like I say, enforcement procedures. However, a judgment might never be paid if the debtor cannot be found or if you can find the debtor, but they have only minimal assets or income. Uh, you may have a judgment and the person be, as we say, judgment proof and you not be able to collect. Now, having said that, sometimes uh, a student may be the person who owes the money in which case they're the debtor. So if someone else owes you money, uh, I think we, yes, sorry, I think we missed a slide. If, uh, if you owe someone else money, then don't expect them to give up easily. If someone else obtains a court judgment against you, then expect that they will perhaps uh, use the court's enforcement procedures which include the hearings, as we mentioned, uh, garnishment of income, garnishment of bank accounts, possibly seizing assets. For example, if you own a car or any assets of any value, uh, the creditor may also hire a collection agency or may record the judgment against your credit. So as I said, if you are, if you've obtained a judgment, it can be hard to collect but if someone else obtains a judgment against you, well, they'll still try to collect. And uh, so don't expect to get out of it easily. Um, sometimes if someone else claims that you owe them money, they will not necessarily go to court right away about it. They may hire a lawyer or a paralegal or a collection agency to contact you before ever filing a lawsuit or possibly instead of ever doing so. Uh, and they may see if the lawyer, paralegal, collection agency are able to come to terms with you, either get you to pay what's claimed or negotiate an amount that both parties can agree on. And uh, sometimes a party claiming money may record it against your credit without ever having gone to court and obtained a judgment. So it's important to be aware there that if someone obtains a judgment against you, that's serious. And it will likely, if you don't pay it, it will likely show up on your credit 
And if you go to borrow money somewhere else or to buy a car, eventually to buy a house, uh, an outstanding judgment will look bad. And it, uh, anyone lending you money will likely insist that you deal with that before they lend you money. If the, per the party who claims the money has not gone to court and obtained a judgment, and all they've done is made a claim against you, and even if they've recorded that against your credit, it will show up on your credit report as merely a claim, not proven in court, and it's not as bad as an actual court judgment. But uh, still, it may have some effect. It just, uh, we'll come back in a, on a subsequent slide here, what you may be able, to be able to do about that. But in the meantime, recognize that if you're the debtor, if you owe money to someone else, or at least they claim that you do, there are, all, there are these means that they can come after you. And uh, so it's good to seek help in responding. There are rules that lawyers, paralegals, and collection agencies have to follow. And if they overstep those boundaries, there are ways to file complaints about them. The ideal outcome really is to negotiate the amount owed and to agree on payment terms. If you're contacted, it's good to seek help and try to negotiate payment terms rather than it being escalated to court uh, or your credit report. Now, sometimes a party will make a claim that is not justified or is exaggerated. And I deal with this many times on behalf of students where they are contacted and money is demanded from them uh, by people that they really don't owe money to, or maybe they do, but the claim being made against them is exaggerated. And, <clears throat> pardon me, and so in that situation, it's important to take a firm position about what you do or do not owe. And again, it's best to have assistance in doing so. If a false claim is recorded against your credit, the credit reporting agencies do provide a dispute mechanism to which you can claim, uh, you, can, you, you can show that the claim is not valid in the hope that the credit reporting agency uh, will remove the false claim from their record. And I have assisted students in doing this. So uh, the email address to contact me at, as I mentioned right now, uh, consultations are taking place via email and it's easy to contact me by email any day of the week and I'll respond promptly. And my email address is legal, L-E-G-A-L, -E at my Caesar. Ca. So L-E-G-A-L -E at M-Y-C-E-S-A-R dot C-A. Again, uh, the important thing to keep in mind, yes, there is the small claims court system up to $35,000 that, uh, that you can pursue someone else through uh, or that someone may pursue you through. But uh, if you are the one who's seeking money, you're the plaintiff. If someone else is seeking money against you, you are the plaintiff, they're the plaintiff, and you are the defendant. In either case, the forms are on the internet in fillable form. Just uh, Google search Ontario Small Claims Court forms. But anyone who asks me, I can always send the link and remind you which form, which form number to use and how to use the fillable form. The nice thing about right now, the consultations I said being via email, is that these forms are Word documents. And if a student does their best job on the Word document, it can be saved and emailed as an attachment. I can then view it and email back with comments, what maybe should be done differently uh, or what suggestions I would make. Uh, it's, up, it's important that the student ultimately be the person drafting it themselves, but I can make sure that they know what they're doing and that they do it correctly before they submit it and guide them from there. And as I say, uh, there are ways if a student is owed money before they undertake a small claims court action or any court action, I could uh, attempt to contact the other person and negotiate it for them. And certainly if a student is contacted by someone claiming money from them, whoever that is, whether it's the party who's owed the money, a lawyer, a paralegal, a collection agency, whoever, feel free to reach out to me and I will help you in responding. And uh, if something is owed, we can negotiate the appropriate amount and appropriate payment terms. But if uh, 
if you're being asked for money that you don't owe, let me help you. And if you're being harassed in any way by a collection agency or anyone else, I can help you with that as well. So I do hope that students will keep those things in mind. And in addition to that, my email address that I can be contacted at any time. Amanda, back to you. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, everybody, for attending. I just wanted to also remind people that in addition to our legal services, we also provide, um, usually we provide a tax clinic. However, this year, due to the pandemic, things have shifted a bit, but you can always file your taxes using UFile. Uh, and I'll provide the link in the chat. And we have a special uh, discount code, which um, allows you to do it for free. And um, it's just not for any businesses, but it's for regular students who are um, filing. And so feel free to check out this page and you can file your taxes using UFile. Um, make sure that you fit all of the um, credentials. So if you own a business, this probably isn't the method for you as tax season is, up, is upon us, but there are some extensions going on. So, and then also additionally, we would love that if you could follow us on YouTube um, and the site is also there listed there. Um, <laughs> be sure to definitely always feel free to reach out to uh, bill at legal at mycaesar.ca or if anything you can always go to the caesar website and we can always help you navigate from there and i can connect you to bill as the C as the services uh coordinator so happy to have all of you with us and thank you so much thank you all <laughs>